So after a few rounds of the 2021 season, Red Bull, and more specifically Red Bull powertrains, haven't been the most reliable. As through the first three races, their cars have only finished a combined seven times out of a possible 12, with their power units and related components effectively doing a Will Smith and slapping the team square in the face, as they've had problems at every single weekend. And while for the likes of Gasly and Sonoda, a few reliability issues won't cost them a crazy large sum of points, for Max Verstappen and Red Bull, it may well cost them a bit more, say, a championship. Though if 2021 is anything to go by, it's not like they really cared about the constructors anyway. But something that the team, and Verstappen especially, will care about is the gap that Ferrari already have on them, as after three races, the team sit 49 points back from the Scuderia, with Max a fairly substantial 46 points away from Leclerc at the top. The Dutchman already saying how when it comes to defending his world championship, there's no reason to believe in it. Which is, funnily enough, the approach that the team takes with their drivers that aren't called Max Verstappen. Hey guys, it's Taran and welcome to the OnTrack channel and to today's video. Before we get going, do make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoy and subscribe down below for more F1 content every week with a variety of videos, I'm sure there's something you'll enjoy. Now with that out of the way, let's get into the video and what's going on with Red Bull's reliability to start 2022. So for a bit of background, in 2021 the Red Bull F1 team formed a new group called Red Bull Powertrains, as for the 2022 season they would need some way of powering their cars along with those of Alpha Tauri, the junior team. Now all of this was because in late 2020, the previous supplier Honda announced they were pulling out of F1, just a few years after returning. Now if the pass is anything to go off, just like this guy, they'll be back. But anyway, with the Japanese outfit leaving, the team were left needing engines, and given they're in Formula 1, you'd think that maybe they could ask one of the other teams nicely, but not really, as at the time, Mercedes were their most direct competitor, so that conversation lasted about as long as Tom Brady's retirement. They could maybe have asked Renault, but after Red Bull stopped using their power units at the end of 2018, the teams had a relationship about as poor as Nicholas Latifi's pace. And then that leaves Ferrari, and while the talks lasted longer than the other two, nothing materialised. After all, they already have two customers, and to be honest, for Red Bull, I can't imagine they were overly keen, as at the end of 2020, the Ferrari engine was, to put it nicely, f***ing dreadful. And so for Red Bull, they went about finding their own way to power their four cars, with the solution being to strike a deal with Honda, whereby Red Bull would take the intellectual property and run the engines as their own. Now, it's a little more complicated than that, as the team do still work with Honda, but effectively it's the same units in the back of the cars as in 2021, just with some Red Bull badges. And then that brings us on to 2022 and the current F1 season, where Red Bull powertrains have had their first opportunity to showcase themselves. And so far at least, it's pretty safe to say it hasn't been the best. But what has actually been going on? Well, I could just say a lot's been happening and be done with it, but where's the fun in that? So first off, Bahrain and what started off as a pretty good weekend with Gasly at the top of FP1 and Verstappen topping FP2 and 3. The only real issue being a hydraulics related one for Sonoda, which is pretty minor in all honesty. But fast forward a day and that's where it started going wrong and given I'm only making this in the early season, I don't yet know when or if it'll finish going wrong. So yeah, Bahrain. And things looked okay until lap 46, when Pierre Gasly's car decided to turn itself into a barbecue. Then after the safety car right at the end of the race, both Red Bulls didn't finish as they suffered from fuel pump related issues. I'd try explaining it a bit more in depth, but if you haven't already figured out, this isn't the most technical of channels. Next up, race 2 in Saudi Arabia, and while Red Bull got away with things this weekend, the Alpha Tauris weren't too lucky, as both had issues in practice before it got worse for Sonoda, as car issues meant he couldn't set a time in qualifying. And then more problems meant he wasn't able to start the race, as what was already a bad weekend got even worse. So then that brings us to Australia, where at least during practice, the Red Bull powered cars weren't in the spotlight, no thanks to Aston Martin. But just like Bahrain, the race was their undoing, with another retirement for Max Verstappen and another 18 points thrown in the bin, this time the issue being a fuel leak. And with all of those retirements, the net result is a 45 point loss for Red Bull, and when you consider that Sainz was elevated to second in Bahrain as well, the change in points between Red Bull and Ferrari would be 48, which if I've done the maths right, would actually put them just a single point behind Ferrari. But instead, they sit 49 points away in third place behind Mercedes. But what happens now? Well, obviously the team will be looking to sort out as many issues as possible, that goes without saying, but I kind of get the sense that the problems are being played off as much less of an issue than they actually are, with team boss Christian Horner saying how he'd rather be making a fast car more reliable than having a reliable car that's slow. Can't think who that's in reference to. But here's the thing, while Mercedes haven't been challenging up at the front, they've had both cars finish in all three races so far, and now that I've said that, knowing my luck, they're probably going to have a Malaysia 2016 at the next race. Back to the point I was making, which was despite being off the pace, they've picked up points and sit ahead of Red Bull. So while Horner may like his fast but unreliable approach, at least at this point, it's not really working. 
And a big question from here is that has it already cost them too much to recover from? There are a lot of races left, but as social media has pointed out way too many times, it's a bigger gap back to the top than any point during last year. And at least so far, it's looked to be either Ferrari ahead on pace or the two fairly equal, which doesn't bode amazingly well for the remainder of Red Bull's season. Plus, later on down the line, it may end up with three teams at the top if Mercedes ever bothered to get their act together. But at least for now, unless Red Bull can significantly outdevelop Ferrari, it's going to be tricky. But this is Formula 1 and anything can happen. Other than Aston Martin being quick in 2022, I'm not sure if I can see that one happening. Anyways, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. As always, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed and subscribe down below for more F1 content every week. But until next time, take care.